Hello. So, the last time, I was quite excited because I had found an original pet style, from what I think, from what I can tell, from the sound, original pet style Big 20. It was a very low serial number, relatively speaking, 40 some thousand or so. I can tell you again. Um, but there are issues. It took a little bit of convincing to get it to read a cartridge, but it did. Um, the keyboard is unresponsive. So this is number 43,810. But it does have a wonky power connector, I think. How do we tell? Well, when the power connector is moved ever so slightly, the machine shuts off. It does. Which typically, I find, means a cold solder joint. See, the connectors, there, the connectors are, they go onto the circuit board, but you see, over the years, the power connector, well, it's funny, usually it's the joystick ports and other things, because the joystick gets put in and put out more often. The machine may not get moved much, and things may not get plugged in very much, or taken out. But the evidence tells us there is an issue. So, boy, there's a lot of screws here. Hello. I think we're done yet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. And eight. And I think the last two are a little different. At least one of them is. It's right by the power connector. Now, let's see what we have here. Okay. So there is, there's just a shield on this part of the board. Not on this part, which is quite handy. Because... Sorry about my nose. Hey, look on here. It is hard to tell exactly. So it is hard to tell exactly if all those little marks mean that something has been leaking or I know at some point Commodore got smarter and started to add extra solder to the connectors, but my eye, and looking at this, I do believe, especially towards the power connector and everything here, that there are some broken solder joints. So, a soldering iron to heat them up. I think we'll remedy this difficulty. I think. I do not have my soldering iron right here. But if we look over, ooh, look at the neat lines. And I see that this is 
Well, maybe revision B. Anyway, so that is what I think. Potentially cold solder joints look like. But we will find out. We will. So here we are, inside the bottom of a Big 20. <coughs> so, yeah, to me, the way I can see this on here, I know it's a little tight here, but it generally does look like most of these, the connectors are sticking through, but you can see a little space in the solder joint, which means a cold solder joint. Funny, down here, there's one thing that actually looks, oh, it's a capacitor. Looks a little dark. Anyway, we must remember, Oh, this is revision D on the board. So it is not perhaps the original, 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 but I still think the keyboard is a pet keyboard from the sound. And over here, we have a typical thing in a lot of Commodore machines. We have 265. 26 chips. Let's have a look. Let's go around the board. So, as I was saying, in a typical Commodore machine we have Two sixty-five twenty-two chips, I believe referred to as the CIA chips, the complex interface adapters. And as I look at the keyboard connector, everything looks good. I see something is lit up there. I don't know. Oh, there's a, there's a place for the light to come through. And then there's little itty bitty RAM chips. And as we cruise across. There's a 6502, some ROM chips, looks like two of them, and perhaps that's another ROM. And there is the VIC chip, for which the machine is named after, and a big capacitor, and such. And then we're over to the connectors. That is where we would plug in the power. Then there's the power switch, then there's the joystick. Yeah, I think there's a little dirt in there too. So here we are. Inside the high tech world of Vic 20. So that pretty much completes our tour. Still, you know, I did try to get that little cover down. I can't really get it down properly. Oh well, the FCC can hunt me down. Anyway, I'm thinking that probably there is trouble with the 6522 chip, which is why the keyboard does not acknowledge us. But we'll see. Anyway, thanks for coming to visit the innards of a big 20. <coughs> so, we need to get a soldering iron. There seems to be something in there that does not come out. And perhaps check 
6522. Of course, the first thing I would do before going at the chips would be to find another VIC-20 keyboard and plug it in. And do I have one handy? I'm not sure. I do not think I do. So, for the moment, <coughs> we will leave our VIC-20 with its cold solder joints. And I will go look for my solder iron, which I did recently find. And I will find another keyboard. And we will go from there. So, once again, thank you for coming. Bye. I will see you again.